I'm Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of www.doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 700 posts, videos, and podcasts on medical preparedness for any disaster. Together with my wife, Amy Alton, a nurse practitioner, we're the authors of the three-category Amazon bestseller, The Survival Medicine Handbook, the New York Times bestseller in health, the Ebola Survival Handbook, and even the designers of the new board game, Doom and Bloom Survival, recently named by the Prepared Family blog as the Teaching Preparedness Resource of the Week. Before I start, a quick thank you to Scott Hunt of Practical Preppers and the very popular Engineer 775 YouTube channel for reviewing several of Nurse Amy's medical kits in their recent video. Make sure that you check out Engineer 775's videos. The information you'll find there is valuable and it'll help you keep it together even when everything else falls apart. Traditional methods of skin closure include sutures and staples. Let's compare them with skin glues. The wound strength with glues is less than with sutures and staples, probably only 10% or so in the early going. After several days, however, the healed skin strength with glue is nearly equal to other methods, especially if used in conjunction with butterfly closures. Remember, you can always use more than one method at a time to close a wound. Although antibacterial ointments can be applied on top of suture and staple closures, they weaken the strength of closures done with skin adhesives. Don't use that on top of skin adhesives. Now, blood or fluid may collect under the adhesive. Now, although drainage from the wound is acceptable with wound and staple closures, and maybe even preferable to collection of fluid under the skin, infection risk may be increased with glues or even prevent skin healing in this circumstance. Now, how do you use topical skin adhesive glue? Before using any method of wound closure, meticulous care must be taken to completely flush out debris and bacteria from the open wound. This should be done with an antiseptic solution like betadine or sterile saline. Any bleeding has to be completely controlled. If deep layers are needed to close dead space, sutures can be used for this purpose, even if you use skin adhesives on top. This will help to decrease any tension on the wound edges. Now, when you're ready to close the skin, approximate the wound edges carefully, best done with the help of an assistant, then gently brush the glue over the laceration, taking care not to push any below the level of the skin. Apply about three layers of the adhesive over the wound, preferably widening the area of glue to increase the strength of the closure. Now, once completely dry, consider adding steri strips to inc increase the strength of the closure even further. It should be noted that some people experience a sensation of heat to the area when the glue is first applied. So, what about super glue? What do we know about it? And how do we know that it works as a wound closure method? Well, you know, many underdeveloped countries may not be able to afford the expensive medical glues, sometimes costing 20 times the cost of regular superglue. And in some, like Cuba, emergency rooms have had to resort to industrial superglue as a closure method. Indeed, it's comparable in terms of the strength of closure. But it should be noted that superglue closures must be kept drier than medical glue closures because they break down more easily. Now, some people will experience skin irritation or even mild burns from the industrial version. You can test for this beforehand by having those in your group place a drop of super glue on the inside of their forearm. If there's a significant reaction such as redness or itching after a period of time, avoid this method of closure on that person or use a prescription medical glue. In my experience, gel versions of super glue are easier to handle due to less dripping, so consider those. And of course, one thing that's important to know is that standard medical texts will tell you to avoid super glue altogether. But in a survival setting, you're going to have to make decisions based on what you have available. The medic will often have to make do with suboptimal methods and equipment. Now, remember, something is better than nothing. Now remember also that it's going to be easier to stockpile commercial glue than the more expensive medical skin adhesives. As a survival medic, you should know how to use all the tools in the medical woodshed. If you learn the pros and cons of every method of wound closure, you'll be better able to succeed even if everything else fails. 
This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times and bad from beautiful Gatlinburg, Tennessee in the Great Smoky Mountains. Thanks for watching. Hey, fill those holes in your medical storage by checking out Nurse Amy's entire line of medical kits and supplies at her store at store.doomandbloom.net.